In early 1957, the collaborative team that produced West Side Story, choreographer and director Jerome Robbins, playwright and screenwriter Arthur Lawrence, composer Leonard Bernstein, and lyricist Stephen Sondheim were facing a crisis. They had written a show nobody seemed to want. In that period, musical theater was considered a diversionary genre, and potential sponsors were put off by the musical story about racial strife and gang warfare. Bernstein later noted that the idea of ending the first act of a musical with two corpses was considered reprehensible. One producer signed on for a time but backed out due to worries about financial viability, the lack of a big-name star to carry the piece, and the difficulty of restraining the creator's artistic demands. In desperation, Sondheim called a young friend of his named Hal Prince, who would go on to produce some of the most celebrated musicals of the 20th century. Prince saw West Side Story as an opportunity, and he jumped at it. The show was also difficult to cast. The collaborators' emphasis on realism, inspired by the precepts of method acting, dictated that everything happening on stage must be seamlessly integrated with the story. No single personality, song, dance, or piece of text would exist solely for presentational purposes. Thus, they were seeking actors who could simultaneously sing difficult music, dance, and act well, and pass as contemporary teenagers. They also had to accept an incredibly demanding rehearsal process that was defined by Robin's ruthless attention to detail, which created a work environment that was often psychologically and sometimes even physically brutal. By the time the musical opened on Broadway on September 26, 1957, the collaborators felt they'd created something truly groundbreaking. But of course, what's extraordinary in art isn't always immediately popular. The show had a decent initial run of 732 performances, but sellouts were rare, and each night about 100 patrons walked out because of the musical's subject matter. The reviews were lukewarm. Most critics didn't know what to make of the show. West Side Story won Tony Awards for choreography and scenic design, but it was the conventionally escapist The Music Man that dominated the ceremonies, winning five Tonys, including the award for Best Musical. Ultimately, it was the 1961 film version of West Side Story that made it famous, winning 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and eventually earning a spot on the American Film Institute's list of the 100 Best American Movies. Its appeal has been so broad that even now, it's likely that not a day goes by without the show being performed somewhere around the world. According to Music Theatre International, there have been at least 40,000 different productions of West Side Story since its original Broadway run, in languages ranging from German to Japanese to Serbo-Croatian. Although Robin's choreography has become iconic, it's likely that Bernstein's music, which is not as vulnerable to alteration at the hands of new directors and producers, will have the longest lasting impact. Bernstein brought his entire skill set to this score, covering the gamut between classical art music and the American musical vernacular. This eclecticism and the musical borrowings that inform it has been a source of criticism. In this regard, it's important to consider the attitudes towards classical music composition that were prevalent in Bernstein's day, which put such a high premium on originality that derivative elements were reflexively abhorred. But this outlook was deeply ahistoric. Every composer stands on the shoulders of their predecessors, and the works of the greatest masters are filled with passages that can be plausibly connected to pre-existing works. The eclecticism of Bernstein's music for West Side Story isn't a bug, it's a feature. His natural passion for a wide variety of music enabled him to write convincing-sounding bebop for the Jets and Latin music for the Sharks, to employ the leitmotif technique of Wagner throughout the show, and even to derive the score's defining three-note motivic kernel from the blast of a shofar. And yet, in Bernstein's hands, this compilation of elements doesn't become a cultural and stylistic hodgepodge. Rather, this diverse aesthetic fully reflects the multicultural reality of America and provides a captivating example of American artistic capabilities that will thrill us for years to come. <laughs> ¶¶